Hey everybody, welcome back to the cabin. You can see by all the snow behind me, winter has returned. It's, uh, I think it's Earth Day today actually, April 22nd, so happy Earth Day. Belated, I'm sure, by the time you watch this. Yeah, this was a little bit unexpected, but it has been below freezing, or below, well, below freezing, but also below seasonal for the last week or so, and it's not forecasted. I, th I think the forecast is calling for it to warm up again in the next couple of days and get closer to seasonal which should be here about plus 12 13 degrees celsius at uh, during the day at the warmest point and around freezing at night we're uh, we're in a pretty high elevation for my latitude here uh, which means it's a lot colder and spring um, ends up being more delayed than it is uh, at lower elevations and of course everything here anyway just dealing with it it's gonna warm up tomorrow enough to melt most of this again but anyway, I thought I would ask uh, or answer some questions I get about my axes and pretty timely because I just got a delivery from, not here, but to the P.O. box from uh, a Toronto Blacksmith who sent me a couple of, a few awesome things that I did not ask for, but I do want to share with you. But anyway, to talk about my axes, um, mostly instigated by my, my uh, daughter Emily asking the other day, what axe I use the most and what my favorite axe is or axe is. Um, the answer is actually kind of complicated answer because I use an axe of some sort every day pretty much and uh, they're all different have different purposes but I'm gonna try to answer what would I use what would be the if I had to pare down to one axe what would it be anyway these are all the axes that I've assembled for the video I'll show you what I have these are most of these are axes I actually use. I've got a couple other random ones in the wood pile and uh, back of the uh, outhouse that I just use for like cutting roots or something in a tree underground. Stuff that I really don't care about. So they're old uh, cheap axes. Anyway, I'll show you what I have. We can go over this. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better in this video too. I didn't change the, uh, the mic, but I am a little bit more sheltered today, even though the winds are high. It's amazing that we've had some really high winds as this cold front came in, especially like 80, 90 kilometers an hour. It's at like 50 to 60 miles an hour. And a lot of damage, a lot of trees came down. So good for me, because I get to cut them up for firewood and for building materials. But that's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I think what I'll start with is probably my felling axe. And I'll get back to this axe again at the end of the video, I think. So this is uh, maybe a three, three and a half pound, probably three pound uh, axe. And it's, I don't even know what the make is. It's made in Sweden. Uh, what's that say on the back? I can't read the little symbol on the back. Oh, three and a half pound. It's a stamp that says three and a half, but and then on the other side, made in Sweden. It's just a simple axe, but it's actually, it's fairly... Whoa. <laughs> there goes that snow off the roof. That's good. Hopefully that's the last time this year. Um, it's a fairly uh, narrow or thin axe, I would say. And a fairly thin bit, which means it's pretty... Uh, it bites into the wood quite well, even softwood. Golly, what's the matter? Does that scare you? Hey, did that scare you? Okay, I'll come and join you soon, okay? Oh, you big suck. <laughs> you want to go for a walk? Have something exciting to show me? Anyway, this is a very versatile axe. Um, it is the axe that I use for chopping down trees, uh, hardwood and softwood. It's actually the only real felling axe that I own, believe it or not. No, I've got a couple of those old ones, like I said, those old cheap ones, but I don't use them for uh, actual felling of green and, and dead trees. Anyway, you've seen me use this a lot. It's a really nice felling axe. It's really comfortable. It's a nice length for me. It's 31 inch handle. And like I said, three and a half pound head. So very versatile, very effective axe. I'll get back to that in a bit. I have this old, well, not it's not, actually, I don't know how old it is. It's probably at least, well, it's more than 10. I bet I've had that for 15 years. <laughs> I'm 
more snow falling off the roof. Um, it's an S-Twing camp axe. And if you want it, you can have it because this is the worst axe that I own by, by far. I used to have a little S-Twing hatchet, you know, the ones with the uh, leather handle. Uh, full tang steel all the way through the handle, but it's got the leather ring handle. And that, I thought, used to think was a pretty decent hatchet. This is the worst axe I've ever handled. It's so out of balance. <clears throat> and this um, vibration you get from that handle being steel all the way through is just really uncomfortable. It's got a really unusually, uh, uh, really round radius, a, a wide radius head that, uh, I don't know, it can be versatile for some things, but it, just really ineffective design in my mind. And like I said, horrible balance. Like the handle's too thick. Uh, it's just, uh, well, I think w the main thing is that it sort of twists when you hit something. So unless you come down absolutely perfectly straight, it wants to, the balance is out of balance this way, not necessarily this way, uh, if you can understand that. But like I said, I'd just like to get rid of that thing. It's just a horrible, horrible axe. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Nice sheath, mask, but that's, uh, that's about the best part of the whole, whole tool. So, that never comes out. I don't even hide, hide that one in the wood pile anymore because I don't want somebody else picking it up and hurting themselves because it's too short and too out of balance. I'll stick with that um, sort of the camp axe size for a bit. This is my Scandinavian axe from Grantsford's Brook and the handle on that is 25 inches. That's a really nice axe actually. It's got a thin bit again like the felling axe, maybe even thinner. Um, very uh, slow Scandinavian grind that that uh, does not have a micro grind at the edge so it's a nice bit for biting into softwood. It's a really good softwood axe. I really like it for that purpose. Um, I just chipped this the other day and I haven't got around to fixing it yet on a piece of ironwood, uh, hardwood, hop horn beam. And uh, it's just that it's so thin that it ended up chipping it. So it's not, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for that type of use. Like I was actually bucking it, cutting a, an ironwood piece right in half. Great for limbing. It's a really nice balanced axe and it's a really nice handle length as well and a, and a nice weight so i'm a fan of that axe for sure it's actually the one that i've probably used them well absolutely for sure it's the one i've used the most over the last four years uh three years ago especially when i cut down all the trees to begin with i used that axe to cut a lot of the trees down the softwood trees uh my friend's place the cedars and the uh, spruce so good axe for that, good axe for limbing, good axe for in camp. Now on that same vein though, I've got this, uh, love this axe, it's one of my favorite axes. It's more of a camp axe uh, style and shape and size. The handle length is 17 inches. Now the head weight is again, it's probably very similar to that one, maybe an inch and a half, inch or a pound and a half, pound and three quarters. A uh, little bit, little bit uh, deeper, longer bit, as you can see. And a little bit wider face, and it's a hardened pull, so you can actually pound stakes on that. You could, I guess, in theory, pound nails as well. I uh, don't do that. I don't do that with any of my axes, and the. Uh, uh, part of what allows it to be hardened and used for that purpose though is that the pole is actually, the eye I mean, is actually uh, thicker. You can see it's quite thick and it's probably hardened but not so hard that it's brittle. Not probably hardened, it is hardened but uh, so that it doesn't deform when you hit it but it um, is thick enough and not so hard that it's not brittle and it won't break or bend. Nice axe, really, really nice camp axe. I use this more than anything right now, I would say, actually. More than the uh, Grantford's Brook. In fact, I might pass that down to a family member. This is an axe that I, a little hatchet that I got 
four years ago I won a, a trip report writing contest from the, you know, Algonquin Adventures forum website and uh, gave, I won a hundred dollars uh, gift certificate for our Algonquin Outfitters in Huntsville and I ended up buying this little Transfer's Brook hatchet a really really small hatchet actually and it's a uh, 0.5 kilograms that's the weight of the head it's a decent little head but it's too rounded for my liking so I don't find it as useful this is a really nice uh, size for getting in and doing like carving and stuff but I don't like that round bit for uh, for carving so I ended up not really using it for that much other than doing a little bit of spoon carving or something like that you know just chopping away on a block on an anvil wood anvil and uh, you know it does fit into a pack and I have used that for skinning game actually like butchering a, a deer and bear so it, it's maybe more useful for that again a nice mask a nice nice uh, sheath that it goes on that's what's that handle it's a 10 inch handle you can see it would fit in a pack really well but it doesn't give you much leverage leverage for striking so that um, limits the usefulness of it okay so this little axe might end up becoming one of my new favorites i just received this from from toronto blacksmith uh, paul krasowski from southwestern ontario canada he's a, a young blacksmith and if you'll have seen um, a video of he and I or I, me visiting his blacksmith shop his forge in uh, in Ontario southern Ontario and he f uh, forged and I'll show you that axe as well I forged a hewing axe for me and I spent the day with him filming it really great guy does a fantastic work and really generous so he sent me this little uh, I think he's calling it a camp axe if you were going on his website he calls it a, a camp axe Again, I'm not sure of the weight. It's a fairly robust axe, and you can see the pole is quite beefy, and the eye is very beefy as well. And that is going to be a really solid camp axe, and I'm sure he designed that so you could pound tent stakes and pound the odd nail with it. And a uh, fairly flat bit, which I really like. And yeah, just very useful for, for around camp pretty thick as well so that you can actually split firewood so very useful like I said for camping and for camping uh, for in camp I'm gonna end up using this I think for a lot of carving it's a bit of a bite in the uh, in the beard here you can get your hand in there almost get your fingers in there but you can get it close enough to get some uh, tight leverage for getting your your hand right into a piece to work so I'm gonna try that for my notches on the uh, chicken coop this week and again he sends his tools out extremely sharp razor sharp but it's a uh, like I said it's a bit faster taper at the end to the to the bite on the face here it stays fairly thick and then uh, gives you that extra thickness for strength so I'm not gonna chip that and also for splitting kindlings for splitting firewood so I can't wait to put this one to use. I will be showing you that on video and I'm sure you're going to see that in a lot of my videos coming up just as I use it every day. So while I'm talking about Toronto Blacksmith, I'll show you the, these people have been so generous to me since I started this uh, YouTube thing. Started uh, filming everything I'm doing and uploading it. Um, Toronto Blacksmith has made me a few things and stamped in uh, in this round in these tools that he just sent me up uh, actually stamped sj in there for sean james so it's pretty cool to have that customized this is that hewing axe I've, another subscriber saw me with this axe and saw that i had no protection on it and i sent them a he asked me to send him a um a drawing of the axe and he made this mask for me so extremely sharp and kind of a what are you doing kelly dangerous acts to not have properly sheathed so that's very helpful and again thank you for uh, i can't remember your name sorry about that it's been a couple years but thanks for that and of course thanks again to paul for sending me this this is his own design so he during the design process he would draw something up and then send it to me i might have just said yeah go ahead i trust you right on the first round but this is uh 
pretty well, long as that head that the edge is 11 inches and the purpose of a hewing axe is to uh, square up a timber and the way they're designed you can see it's flat on one side and then you have the, the bevel on the other side and then it's offset and the handle is as close to this face as possible so what that allows me to do is get right down tight to chop down a, a flat board uh, down a log to flatten that board so that I can get my hand closely and that it doesn't bounce off because a double beveled typical double 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 beveled axe when you try to chop flat it ends up bouncing off and won't bite so a hewing axe allows you to bite into that wood uh, very horizontally in this case that's what I use it for and they're left and right handed so this one is I use it this way with my right hand dropping it down and then if it was beveled the other way I could do it this way so if I was to do it that way I'd have to reach over the log to to, to uh, hew it anyway pretty cool very cool how long's the handle on that 28 inch handle the point of these these things the weight of it and the long handle allows the weight that uh, fulcrum, the long fulcrum, the long le lever, lever, to uh, let the weight of the head do the work. As you can tell, I'm not as technical as a lot of the, like the bushcraft experts who spend a lot of time on terminology for axes and knives and stuff. I just use them. That's something I use uh, all the time, almost daily, is a splitting axe, and I don't need to introduce you to this thing i'm sure because you've seen it so many times on my channel this is the chopper one i still have not busted a spring believe it or not on this thing i mean it's a little dull because the odd which you don't mind it still bites in and, and splits but um just from the odd overstrike, not overstrike, but glance where it goes into the dirt. But I always make sure I have no rocks around my chopping anvils. But that's a really cool axe. I've seen it pop up in a lot of different places, a lot of different channels. I've seen guys using them now. And, uh, you know, it's just something I really enjoy using. So that's my primary, primary uh, splitting axe. That's a 36 inch handle. Again, heavy head, long handle, and basically you're letting the, the uh, length and the weight do the work. The longer the handle is, the safer it is so that it gets out far from you. And the more um, swing you get, so the more energy you get transferred to that wood. Now, you just have to be more accurate with a longer axe so that you're not over striking and destroying that handle. As you can see, I've only maybe hit it a couple of times by the looks of it. You know, no damage on the on the uh, throat of the uh, handle itself. So that's my primary splitting maul, or if you want to call it that. This is my old one. And this is my old beater that ends up getting left wherever I take it to another wood pile and start splitting. Um, it's just a beefy, dull, really thick, but surprisingly effective not surprisingly if you know anything about splitting you'd know that that does a good job of splitting firewood um, it's a little shorter handle than I like but that's pretty typical for this style and again I haven't been over striking all there's no damage on the handle and yeah it's just just a real brunt utility piece of of steel I haven't used it for pounding but uh, it's got a deep enough, big enough, heavy enough pull to do some stake bounding as well. I think what I'll do though, I think I will put a new handle on that and uh, just clean up that head a little bit. Pretty it up a little bit and uh, teach my daughter and uh, wife maybe how to use this one. So that's pretty well it for my axes, but I got a nice new tool again sent to me and a couple other things that I'm gonna show you log dogs and some uh, blacksmith uh, tongs because he knows my plans for my future workshop but uh, he sent me these two things the axe and this adds 
because I mentioned to him that I was going to be squaring up a lot of the timbers on my next two buildings, the chicken coop and the workshop. So I was, I was very surprised when I went to the P.O. box and found a heavy package. I thought he was maybe sending me this, but such a heavy package full of all these other tools that a uh, very pleasant surprise. This is a flat adds and what it's used for is squaring up timbers again like the hewing axe and really just going down. It's a long handle so it's really meant to swing between your legs standing over top of the wood and swinging down and uh, flattening the timber out this way but you can also use it uh, on the side of the timber as well to uh, square it up like this. I, I, if you haven't seen that process the best thing you can do is tune into the next couple of videos on either channel probably but especially on my self-reliance channel just to see me putting that to use on the two projects I'm working on now. Um, like I said I will be doing a lot of square timbers on these next two projects so that will be used almost every day. Beautifully sharp, nice and thin, it's going to cut nice thin uh, uh, shavings off of that wood to square it up nicely. Really looking forward to using that. It's pretty light and it's a really long handle for that. Like I said, just swinging as you're standing, swinging between your legs. It's actually a 35 inch handle. Yeah, beautiful piece of, uh, beautiful tool and beautiful piece of workmanship from Paul at Toronto Blacksmith. So if you haven't checked out his stuff, make sure you do. It's worth, uh, it's worth following him on maybe Instagram and, and, uh, I think he's got a few YouTube videos there, not many, but we're checking out for sure. So thanks, Paul. I really appreciate that and can't wait to put it to use. Well, that's it. I hope that um, answers Emily's questions, although I did answer her off camera as well, obviously. But I hope that uh, answered your, your questions as well, if you had any about my axes. And, uh, just coming from somebody, I guess, might be helpful to you if, to have information or... Um, recommendations from somebody who uses an axe as much as I do. Lots of better axemen uh, out there and guys that uh, know more about the, tech, the uh, technical terms and everything uh, for axes. But um, like I said, I think I've got a pretty good handle on what works now that I've been at this pretty well straight steady for the last three years. Hey pup. Anyway, that's it. It's uh, warming up a little bit and it's perfect perfect weather to put these axes to use nice temperature for working so I'm going to do that now so thanks for watching everybody really appreciate it and I do look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time take care